From Kitty Hawk to Cape Kennedy. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration presents Aeronautics and Space Report. This is astronaut Edward White as he stepped from the Gemini 4 craft into space. He and James McDivitt then flew on for four days, completing our longest space trip yet. Next, Gemini 5 with veteran astronaut Gordon Cooper assigned as command pilot. Cooper's 22 orbit mission ended Project Mercury. Now he will be involved in an even longer flight than McDivitt's and White's. Gemini 5 is planned for seven days, 112 orbits. Sharing the piloting duties will be Charles Pete Conrad. Like all the Mercury and Gemini pilots before him, astronaut Conrad spends much of his time in training. While in orbit, the two men will conduct a variety of experiments. These include a checkout of computer and radar equipment to be used on the first rendezvous and docking maneuvers. And from a vantage point similar to this, they will take pictures of cloud cover and selected parts of the Earth. Gemini 5 is the second long duration mission and the third in a series of manned space flights which are preparing the way for future journeys to the moon. Rockets, satellites, research planes, spacecraft, products of the emerging space age. Many of these objects are now on display at the New York World's Fair and are assembled in one location, the U.S. Space Park. They constitute the largest collection of space hardware outside Cape Kennedy. There's an Atlas rocket, like those that boosted Mercury astronauts into orbit. The Aurora 7 spacecraft, in which Scott Carpenter flew three times around the world. A two-man Gemini spaceship and full-size Titan II booster. A replica of Ranger, the lunar photographer and an actual scale mock-up of a portion of the giant Saturn moon rocket. In addition, Mariner, Tyros, X-15, these and many more pieces of hardware for this country's peaceful exploration of space are on view for visitors touring the U.S. space park. When astronauts return from deep space missions, their spacecraft will slam into the Earth's atmosphere at extremely high speeds. To safeguard the men during this critical friction period, NASA developed protective devices called heat shields. Shape combined with the right materials provide the best protection. As the shield burns, melts, and chars, the intense heat is diverted from the spacecraft. Ground-based wind tunnels and simulators gave many of the needed answers to the problem of re-entry heating, but to resolve the uncertainties, a flight test program was required. Used for the experiment was a blunt shape, two feet in diameter and weighing 200 pounds. Called Project Fire, it was managed by NASA's Langley Research Center. An Atlas rocket boosted the fire package along a suborbital flight path. On the downhill side of its trajectory, some 187 miles up, a rocket engine ignited to ram the fire package back through the Earth's atmosphere. Its speed, over 25,000 miles per hour. As it burned its way toward Earth, instruments sent information on heating intensity to ground stations, ships, and planes near Ascension Island in the South Atlantic. Project Fire confirmed that future manned craft can be designed to withstand the searing heat of re-entry after missions far out in space. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.